Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, my name is Cecilia. I'm here. We're doing a Bible study Sunday school lesson on I share my faith today. Um, whatever day it is that you're watching it. Before we get started, I just want to start out in a prayer. I love to pray. Um, Lord, I thank you, God, for this lesson. I thank you for the opportunity to be able to do this Bible study, Lord. I just thank you that I just further even get to share with everyone my faith and what you've done in my life and not just in my life, but different people's life, God, Lord. And I thank you for that. I ask that you would just bless each person that's watching this. I just ask that you would just share that they would see the light that you have in me that you have given me god and just i just ask that they would just be able to use that light lord and then it would just grow them god and give them hope lord where they need hope and peace where they need peace that if they can see that you can do it in someone else lord that you can do it in them and i just thank you for that god and i just thank you for this lesson i ask that you would just make my mind your mind my heart your heart lord in jesus name i pray amen so we're going to talk about I share my faith. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about Saul. But before we do, I just want to kind of ask you guys a question. I know you can't answer me, but I want you just to pause and stop and think for just a second about the last time that you had some really good news. Maybe that you wanted to share with somebody or that was shared with you or that you received. So while you're kind of thinking about that, um, I just want to share some good news that I received, um, which is kind of crazy today, but it's, it's my good news. I got a new fridge today and it was really cool. First in Jesus Christ, my as a believer, my favorite thing to do is to share what God has done in my life, to share what he's done. Like I said, in my cousin's life and in my friend's life, because he can and he does do such amazing things in our lives. And so we're also going to talk about some people in the Bible who he's done that with as well. So if you have your Bible, if you don't, pause it, go grab your Bible. We're going to go to Acts 9, 1 through 19. I'm not going to read all of it right now. I'm going to let you guys do that at home. But I'm pretty much going to read a couple of some of the important scriptures. So we're talking about Paul, who is also Saul. So this was before Saul committed his life to Jesus, because I'm sure as some of us can relate, right? We all had this life before we went to Jesus. And maybe you haven't went to Jesus yet. Maybe you've had this whole life that you've been living and it's not fulfilling. You're having, you have a void in your heart, or you just know without a doubt that you are not living right. That there are things out there in the world that you just think are more fun to do. It's more fun to party. It's more fun to do drink alcohol, to do drugs. These things may be more fun to you, but there's still a lot of emptiness in that. So you may not have turned your life over to Jesus. And so this may be the video that you're like, hey, wow, you know, there is a lot of exciting things that Jesus can do, even if I've done all these things. So if that's you, we're going to say a prayer with you at the end before we and our Sunday school lesson. So we're going to talk about Saul, a man who wasn't living right. He, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. So the disciples are the people that walked with Jesus before he went, before he was crucified and before he rose again and before he went to heaven. Those were the guys that he really taught a lot of stuff to. So Saul's threatening to murder the Lord's people. Wow, I know, right? Can we top that? Some of us probably can. Um, I know before I went to Jesus, I was doing a lot of things I didn't need to be doing. I was, you know, living, I lived an alternative lifestyle. I lived the, the drug lifestyle. I lived where I wanted to party. And, you know, I went from being a full-blown mom to partying all the time because I thought that was what I needed to do. And so, so I can relate. And I wasn't threatening to murder anybody, but... I was not living right. And Saul was not living right. So Saul's on this road to Damascus. And as he's on this road to Damascus, all of a sudden, he hears this voice. And I'm going to read some scripture to you. Saul, or Acts 9, 3. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, 
Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you? Lord, Saul asked, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go to the, into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Wow. I am so thankful that the Lord did not blind me to get my attention. But he wanted Saul's attention. The Lord wants your attention. And he will do what he feels to get your attention. I remember five years ago, the Lord told me clear as day, I want your attention, Cecilia. I want you to come back to me. I want you to live the life I want and have for you. And I told him no. And he told me it was okay. But I would turn my life back to him before I lost almost everything. And I lost almost everything. And then, and not because I lost almost everything did I turn my life back to him. I finally got to the point where I was empty enough that I wanted that whole field. And I knew he was the only one that was going to fill it. So Saul is blinded for three days. And he goes into Damascus and he runs into a man named Ananias. And Ananias has already been told by the Lord that he is supposed to talk to Saul. And Ananias is kind of questioning. He's like, but he's threatened to kill your people, Lord. And the Lord's like, that's okay. I'm going to use him. I am going to use him. And so he says, the Lord says in Acts 9, 15, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. So he took a man that was threatening to kill all his people. And he's like, no, I chose him. I want him to go out because I know that he's going to make an impact. And sometimes we think, well, what kind of impact can we make? Are we really truly going to be able to impact somebody else? The answer is yes, because you may be in a situation where you can reach different people that I may not be able to reach. And I'm in a situation where I can reach different people than some of my other friends because I've been down that road and I know those people, so I'm able to reach a different set of people. So don't disqualify yourself because the Lord qualifies you. And that's what he's doing here to Saul. So after all this happens, he talks to Ananias. And we're going to go down to 917. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on this road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Wow. Just like the Lord blinded him, the Lord removed the scales, opened his eyes, and he was able to see. So now Saul, this man who was somebody that was threatening to murder his people, has now been baptized. He's been filled with the Holy Spirit and his life is completely changed. It's cool how God does that. It's really, really cool. And so after that, Saul spent several days with the Lord's disciples, the same men, the same men that he was threatening to murder. He took a man. He took a man and he changed him. He opened his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he changed his heart. And it gives me so much hope, not only because I know what he's done in my life, but because if he can take a man who was going to murder his disciples, open his eyes, open his heart, fill him with the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and change his heart in his life, that now he's spending time with these disciples learning that's just an amazing amount of hope because if he can do it for him, oh my gosh, just imagine what he can do for you. Um, after he did this, at once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the son of God. 
There we go. Talk back to the I share my faith. This man now is sharing what God and Jesus can do. He's, he's going and he's telling everybody because he wants them to know, hey, this is what the Lord did for me. Hey, the Messiah is real. Not only did I hear his voice, not only did he blind me, he removed the scales off my eyes, but now he lives inside of me. The Messiah is real. Jesus is real. So let's take this to today. I'm going to use me as an example because I just love to share what the Lord has done in my life. I love for people to get a see that he can take a junkie who was living in poverty and turn her life so far around. Now, my life's not perfect and by no means is not perfect. But he took me broken. He took me shattered and he is putting me back together. And so my favorite thing to do, like I said, is to let everybody know that he did that. Because when I came to the Lord, I was heartbroken. I was empty. I had a void that I did not know how to fill. And I did not know where I was going to fill that void. The Lord knew. He knew that the second I committed my life back to him, he knew that he was going to fill that void. But I had to know. So when I committed my life back to him, it was, it's not easy. It was hard. It's hard to give up all those extra fun things that I was doing in my life. But now I'm happy. Now I have, I don't have a hole anymore. And when I start to think that there might be one, I can go and I can talk to the Lord and he reminds me. And then not only that, I can go and I can talk to my friends and I can be like, hey, this is what's going on in my life. And they are like, Cecilia, don't you remember what God did for you? If he can take you out of the pits from where you were at and put you where you are today, he can do anything. And when I say the pits, I mean the pits. I was living in a rundown house with no water, barely any food, half the time without electricity. I mean the pits. And he picked me up. Today, I live with water. I won't live without it. Today, and I'm not living without water. <laughs> but today, he's picked me up. And today, I get to share with you what the Lord can do. Today, I get to read my Bible. It's a privilege. Not everybody gets that privilege, but it's a privilege. And I'm so grateful I get that privilege. So today, I get to share with you my faith of what the Lord can do. I get to share with you the faith of Saul, of what he was able to do. One of my favorite scriptures is Mark 5.20. It says, I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation because that's my absolute favorite version of the scripture. So the man left and went into the region of Jordan and parts of Syria to tell everyone he met about what Jesus had done for him. And all the people marveled. So that's Mark 5.20. So if you look in your Bible and you back up a couple of scripture verses, it's talking about a man who was possessed. And Jesus went to him and he, had, he was just in so much bondage. The Lord knew. And Jesus went to him and he was telling, you know, and he started speaking to the demons inside this man. And he cast these demons out. And when he cast these demons out, the man had so much freedom. He's like, Jesus, what can I do for you? What can I do after you have given me all this freedom? What can I do for you? And that's what he tells him. He was like, go tell everybody what I've done for you. Tell everyone. And so he did. And when he did, all the people marveled. Because Jesus can take a broken person and put them back together. There's not anything else in this world that can take something that's broken and put it back together. Nothing. There is no, other than, the, other than the Bible and other than him, there is nothing that can put anything back together that is broken and damaged. And at that point, and, and I've been at that point where there's no hope. I've been at that point where there's no life. And he restored all that. And he's the only one that can. And so I just really loved this Bible study. I was not going to lie. I was a little nervous about it. And I'm not sure why, because I just love to tell people what Jesus can and what he will do. That if you submit your life to him and you turn your life around to him, 
if you're hurting today and you're broken today and you don't have the Lord in your life, it's real simple. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's really simple. And so if you haven't done that today, I just think it's super important that you do because he will change your life. He will take all the craziness, all the chaos, all the hopelessness, and he will give you hope. He, he will give you a life that is worth living and it's fun because let me tell you, I'm 35 years old and this is the best life I've ever lived. And it's not because I live in a mansion and it's not because I have millions of dollars and it's not because I get everything I want when I want. It's because I now have hope. I have hope for a future. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. I have that hope that he's given me. And so everything, everything is doable. Even on my bad days, I want to get up and I want to do life. So before we end, I just want to pray with you. Lord, I thank you for whoever's watching this video. I thank you that you have stirred in their hearts so that they can see if you can take a man like Saul, Lord, and a person like me, God, and you can turn our lives completely around, that you can do it for them. That they're not too broken, they're not too battered, that they're not too far gone. Lord, that if there is a hole that they need filled, Lord, that they will find it in you. Because you are the one that gives hope. You are the one that fills that void. You are the one that is completeness. And I thank you for that, God. I just ask, Father, Lord, that you would be with each and every person that's watching this video, Lord. That you would just bless them, Lord. That you would just... Put your hands on them, God, that you would just surround them, Lord, that you would just keep them, that you would give them peace, God, peace that surpasses all human understanding, Lord, that no matter what situation that they're going through, Lord, that they can find peace and solace in you. And I thank you for that, God. And I just ask that you would just be with them in your precious and mighty name. In Jesus' name, amen. I do okay. Yes, I, I wouldn't want to.